Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending, of course, on when and where you are watching today's live sale. You guys, thank you so much for joining me today. If you are here and able to join me live, I certainly appreciate that. And of course, to anybody who is watching the replay, welcome, and I hope you enjoy today's sale. But regardless, Thank you so much for checking it out and or being here. Now, with that said, as always, I do like to go uh, live a little bit early just so that we have the opportunity to say to hello, say hello to as many people as possible in the chat. Um, I want to first say this to anybody who is new or it has been a while since you have been to the sale. Welcome to and welcome back. Um, perhaps today is the day that you will let us know that it is your first time here. Perhaps it is your first time commenting. Uh, let us know. There are some wonderful people, as you will see in the chat. Um, so you're going to be made to feel right at home and remember uh, we're all here for our shared love and passion, our enthusiasm for vintage and antique. So without further ado, let's get right into those hellos. The first comment that I'm able to uh, highlight is Miss Karen McGurdy. How are you doing today, Karen? Thank you for being here. Hello, Cheryl, over there in the UK, a super windy. Girl, let me tell you something. Cheryl, the other day, I am here in Ohio, and I went to look up the weather because I was talking to mom to give her the weather forecast. Everyone say hello to Mama Wanda. Um, she always is watching, and Richard is probably watching too. So, um, And hello, Gracie and Louie. They are so cute with their haircuts. But any old how, I was looking up the weather and I um, typed in the location and it came uh, and I wasn't paying attention. And I was like, why is it so cold? It's because it came up in the UK. Who knew? <laughs> Funny little antidote. I mean, maybe you had to be there. I don't know. Hey, Kim, how are you doing today? <laughs> Thank you for being here with us. Good afternoon, Miss Lisa Shields. Always a pleasure to see you. We got Miss Ruthie B in the chat. You know we're going to circle back to Miss Ruthie B here in just a second. Hello, Bug. How are you doing today? I want to say this. It was a great, um, it, it, it did my heart good, let's say that, uh, when I was on here because I can see the comments coming in. And to see you guys welcoming one another, I mean, that is huge. Again, it is, there really is an amazing community. Um, so it, it did my heart good to see you guys kind of shouting each other out and saying hello to one another. I think that's a very powerful thing. So it was really good to see. Hey, Shannon, how are you doing today? We got Miss Beth C. How are you doing? Are you recuperating from the sale last night, right? She had a good sale over on Vamp, you guys. Good afternoon, Miss Stephanie. How are you doing there, neighbor? Good to see you as always. Let's see y'all just in there saying hello to one another. That's right. We do got a lot of books. There's a lot of ephemera today. Uh-oh, there she is. Watch out, everybody. She's putting a whammy down on it. It's Miss Pammy Whammy. How are you doing today, Miss Pammy? Hello, Miss Joan D, Miss Joan DeGroat Ives, right? We got two Jones out there. So how are you doing today, Joan? Thank you for being here. I am scrolling past. I apologize if I am missing anybody. Hello, Elaine. Good afternoon. It is good to see ya. We got Miss Grandma Mary up in the chat. How are you doing today, lady? Hope everybody is staying dry out there. It is raining here today. Joe, good afternoon. Thank you for being with us. But I will say I will take rainy and warm over sunny and cold any day. Hello, Esther. How are you doing this afternoon? Thank you for being here. Miss Colleen is with us in the chat. Good afternoon, Colleen. Karen Gillette. Hello, Miss Gillette. How are you doing today? Well, if it's not, Miss Rebecca T is with us again today. Hello, Rebecca. Always a pleasure. Miss Lisa Green. Good to see you, lady. Thank you for being here. And Dawn. Good afternoon, Miss Dawn. How are you? We got Miss Linda K is in the chat. How you doing, Miss Linda? We got Gija is with us, keeping us international. What a pleasure. Thank you so much. Miss Becca, how are you doing today, Miss Becca? And Miss 
glowy girl. How are you doing today, Miss Glowy? We got Wings is in the chat with us. How are you doing today, Wings? Audrey is up there. We got our Canadian residents. We've got our Belgian. We got our UK. Maybe we've got Austria. Maybe New Zealand today. I don't know. It's a bit late or morning now. It's like nine o'clock. I don't know. Is it 9 a.m. the next day? They're like in the future over there. Hey, Anne's Attic. How are you doing today, Anne? Miss Jenny is with us. Good afternoon. My cheeks are starting to hurt. I'm smiling. <laughs> hey, Gavin. How are you doing today? Miss Karen, it is good to see you, lady. Always a pleasure chasing down that uh, the vintage Miss Joan Lopez. She shared me a little collection photo. I greatly appreciate that. Thank you again, Joan. Um, Miss Nettie, how are you today, Miss Nettie? Miss Gutierrez is with us in the chat. How are you doing today, Get? Gabby, how you doing today, Debbie? <laughs> Again, hello to everybody. Don't be shy. Say hello. Let us know you're here in the chat. If not, I certainly respect that. All right, you guys, we've got a lot of stuff today. We do. Um, Y'all know I do love some glass. I love to bring some glass to a sale. And while we do have some glass, we've got all the three pieces. You're shocked, I know. Who am I? We've got three pieces of glass. We've got a piece of pottery, some silver plate. We even have some porcelain. But the vast majority of our sale today will be books. It's going to be ephemera. There's going to be some absolutely amazing, and I do mean amazing, one of a kind, mid-century art. It's very mod. It's very funky. It's a little naughty. So be prepared for that one. Uh, we've got some antique games. I am really excited about this. Listen, y'all, truth be told, you know, as a reseller and a collector, I mean, whoo, listen, we know how bad it can be as a collector, but when you put reselling on top, <laughs> we got to get rid of some stuff. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. I got to thin the herd like drastically because it's a lot. So we're going to do that together today, you guys. Um, so let's get into it. The, uh, the nuts and berries, the rules of the game are going to be the same. Yes, they are. To anybody, again, who is new or it has been a while, I'm going to need you to send me out that contact information. It is right here. It is the Colts of Vintage at Yahoo.com. That's going to pop up throughout the sale in the banner here. It is, of course, the um, pinned comment. That is that blue rectangle that you're seeing up here at the top of the chat. And last but not least, it's in the description of the video. The information is still the same. You want to send me your real name if it's different than your YouTube username. Your full shipping address, most importantly, is going to be, of course, the zip code so that I can get you the calculated discounted shipping. And the last but definitely not least is the email address that you use for PayPal. And if you don't have PayPal, it is totally okay. You can still make a purchase, send the same email with the same contact information. Just let me know that you would like a guest link. I will reply to your email with a PayPal link. Uh, you can use any form of payment, credit card, Venmo. We have somebody that uh, pays their invoice through Venmo, which is totally fine. Um, so we can do that too. So you can check out as a guest. You don't have to sign up for an account. Um, so that's even better. And you get the buyer protection on top of that, okay? Um, I don't think I have any claims. So everything today is going to be the offer up. Y'all know the rules of the game with that, right? So we're going to show the item. We'll assign a price. You'll see it highlighted. We'll talk about it if you're interested in it. Um, you know, you're going to go head to head with some other folks that might be interested or not, or not. Uh, and then we'll do our 20 second countdown. Thank you, YouTube lag. And of course, we have our bid end, our official bid ender, the one, the only, Miss Ruthie B is back with us yet again this sale this week. Uh, I want to give a huge round of applause to Miss Ruthie B, as always, as is deserved. Uh, for agreeing to be here to volunteer 
her time as she does. Oh, we got a mushy, we got a mushy bid end. Um, as she always does every week. I really, truly do appreciate you, lady. You always are killing it. And if you're not familiar, as I say before, she's got fast internet and fast fingers. So you got to get those bids in. Throw in those just in cases. We are going to honor the just in cases. But as I always say every week, if you don't want to use a just in case, you don't have to. You're not obligated. It is not something you have to do. Just know that I am going to be honoring them. Okay. The two things that I do ask if you would like to use your just in case is, of course, to have been an active bidder up into that point and to definitely hold on to your just in case until you hear the countdown. Okay but you're racing against this lady right here. Now, since we have got those applaud hands out, let's give a huge round of applause, not just for Ruthie, but also to this lady right here, Miss Desert Gal Curious, as well as, let's get her up here, Miss Karen Gillette. Ruthie rocks, but so does Karen and so does Kim, who are consistently, again, being here, putting in links, putting in reminder information, uh, making sure that the chat stays a positive place. I want to thank Karen and Kim also for being here. Ladies, it is greatly appreciated individually. Y'all kill it, but collectively, you are on it. I think it's the best mod squad out there. Thank you, ladies. I really do appreciate you. Let's get into it, shall we, boys and girls? Let's start off with some of the few pieces of glass, and then we're going to hit that ephemera. We're going to hit those books hard. Here we go, okay? The first item up <clears throat> is like a 1970s, early 1980s. We're going to just start it off at a modest $10. It is a, uh, a tumble up. I always want to call these bottoms up for some reason but it is a tumble up. It is a water decanter or whatever other liquid you need to have by your bedside. No judging. Um, but we do have our clear tumbler, okay? We do, of course, have our, oh gosh, gilding, our gold stripe on there. This is Libby. You can see the cursive L down here on the bottom, okay? There are no chips or cracks on the tumbler, or pardon me, on the decanter, beg pardon, there are no chips or cracks on the tumbler either. Thank you, Miss Dawn. Appreciate you. Um, these are totally utilitarian. You know, I am one of those people. I do actually keep a bottle of water next to the bedside, truth be told. Um, so this just kind of, I mean, it's an Aquafina bottle. It's not very fancy <laughs> by any means. I probably should maybe consider switching to one of these. You, you know, you can put your water in there. You put your tumbler on there keep out any dust or creepy crawlies. Um, so yeah, the tumbler is also marked with the cursive L. It is there. So again, it is Libby glass. It is seven inches exact once put together from bottom to the top of our tumbler. Again, neither piece has any chips, no cracks. Use it as its actual intended purpose. Turn this into a florist vase, have an extra drinking glass, turn this into like a little potted plant. Maybe you want to do like a little African violet, throw in a little thyme in there and put it on the windowsill. And then you have a matching floral base. Totally up to you. Or like I said, dress up that bedside if you're one of those late night water drinkers like myself or whatever other drinker. Again, we're not here to judge. All right, let's do it. Miss Dawn is in it. Miss Joan, appreciate you. Miss Jenny Weaver ain't playing around, sister. Hey, Christine. Hey, Dusty. How are y'all doing? All right, ladies. I appreciate everyone, everyone's bids. Again, Libby Glass, tumble up. I almost said it again, bottoms up, with our beautiful gold striping. No condition there. Let's do the countdown. Here we go. So 20, 19, 18, 17. 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. Hey, Fat Kitty Finds, how are you doing today? Ooh, Nancy's not, okay, Miss Joan getting in on it. She got that just in case in, I mean, does this bring you the nostalgia? 
I know it's so simple, right? And people are like, but how does that? But tell me this isn't giving you like late 70s, like early mid 80s. Come on, right? Splish, splash, bid and Thank you, Miss Ruthie B. Appreciate you. <laughs> Nancy girl, you almost had it, lady. But Miss Joan won playing around. So at 23, Miss Joan. Lady, congratulations, and I sure do appreciate you. It is coming to you, lady. Thank you. And of course, this will be added into your purchases from yesterday. I had a couple of folks, let me set that down, had a couple of folks, uh, three to be exact, email requesting that their packages be held from yesterday's sale, and I'm always happy to do that. So again, um, of course, Misty and I have our Tuesday sale, and obviously with it being Wednesday, if you do, want me to hold your packages, you're always welcome to do that. Just email me. So great. Let's do our set. We've got a set for you. Okay. Now, here's the thing. I wish, oh, well, um, I don't know, y'all. Let me show it to you. And maybe one of you, hey, shenanigans, how are you doing today? Um, let me start it off. Let me start it off. I'm going to start this set off at $18. Again, it's very elegant. It definitely serves a utilitarian purpose, but you can certainly think outside of the box for this next set. It is, in fact, boys and girls, it is a sugar and creamer. Um, now, this is cut. I The weight on this is giving me crystal. My light today is not the best, but yesterday when I was getting like full sun in here, I was really getting prism effect. Um, the way, the clarity, and the fact that I was really getting prism really makes me believe that this may not be uh, cut glass, but cut crystal. Um, again, you can see that clarity. We do have uh, the cuts. This isn't just etched. I mean, it is in there. You can feel those, but we have a beautiful floral pattern not just on the front but also on the back do you all see the divots well maybe not but there's like little cuts here you can kind of see it almost looks like air bubbles on the side but they're actually textured in there look at the rim is even cut i mean it's so look at how deep this leaf pattern is we even have those cuts classic like starburst on the bottom Again, no chips or cracks. Both pieces come in at approximately three and one fourth inches tall. Three and one fourth inches tall. Pattern is repeated here on our creamer. Again, the cuts on the handle so it doesn't slip on you. You've got the cuts along the rim. Beautiful deep cuts on that floral pattern. Note that in the center here, it is repetitious of on the bottom, okay? I just think they're very stately, very elegant. Look at like the small almost zipper cuts on the spout. I love it. It just has a beautiful faceted look to it. Catches the light beautifully. You can see the patterns are mirrored the best on the creamer. I just, they're very elegant. Again, as an actual sugar or creamer, as a little like bud vases, put a small floral, a short stem floral arrangement. I just think they're very beautiful. Again, no condition issue. Matching set. I do believe them to be cut crystal, not cut glass. And if we don't have any interest on that, I'm going to set it to the side. We're going to keep it moving. Okay. Let me set these guys right over here. We've got a... No, I don't. Oh, we're going to... Okay, I'm taking a hard left turn, maybe a hard right turn. I don't know. Wait, what, girl? Yeah, Grandma um, Grandma Mary is bringing up a really good point. I don't know. Sometimes notifications don't come through. Um, so if you don't get a notification, you know, best practice, check your PayPal account. You should see like a little red notification at one, and that will let you know, hey, there's an invoice in here. If you're not seeing that, please don't ever hesitate to reach out to me right here at the Cult of Vintage. Sometimes I've spelled your email wrong. Sometimes I have sent the wrong email, or pardon me, the wrong invoice to the wrong person. It happens, okay? But don't ever be shy. You don't ever have to be shy. All right, we're making a hard left. 
we're going to do some really retro rad artwork. Okay. Okay. It's been a while since I did, I did a, um, an, an auction ephemera haul and that some of those pieces are going to be available in today's sale. So I'm going to start this first one off at $15. It is in very good mod retro um, condition. Okay. Check it out. Are you ready? Day glow. Look at this. Look at that rhino. The black and white rhino and the greens, the blues, that bright fuchsia. This measures 19 by 18. 19 by 18 on this one. Okay. It is mounted on foam board. Okay. Condition really good. Now, this was professionally mounted. We can see it here on the back. It is the Prestige Molding and Supply Company, and it is from Addistown, 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 Ohio, Ohio. But it has its original little label on there. So, I mean, it was totally professionally mounted. It is in such good condition. Absolutely, if you are a UV collector, well, the bright, Look at that. Those flowers light up like nobody's business. We're not really catching the green all that much. Hey there, Miss Melissa. How are you doing today? So it is our psychedelic rhino. Mount, it is a print mounted on the foam board. And again, that is 19 by 18. Okay. Uh, if you're wondering, it gets wrapped in paper. It gets a, a layer of bubble wrap. It's put inside of cardboard and then it just gets wrapped in a vinyl bag to keep it safe right the shipping's really inexpensive on this stuff too so don't worry i got you covered thank you miss jenny weaver stop it imagine this with your swung bases in front of it use this as a backdrop for taking your photos i love it it's so weird it is so absolutely weird and i love the black and white rhino against that super psychedelic jungle. All right, we got Miss Jenny. It's rad, man. It's like rad. All right, we got Miss Jenny Weaver in it at 15. Lady, appreciate you. Let's go ahead and I'll tell you what, if we only see one person interested in a piece going forward, let's not do 20 seconds. Let's just do a 10 second countdown. So I only see Miss Jenny, 10 second countdown, 10, 9, eight seven six five four three two one and a bit end psychedelic rhino i don't know that that's really what rhinos make sounds like there is our king of this jungle Bit end. Thank you, Miss Ruthie B. Appreciate you. Miss Jenny Weaver, lady, congratulations and thank you. It's coming to you at 15. He's wonderful. I mean, you could do just like poster tack on the back of this and just throw it up on the wall. You could totally frame it too. I mean, to each their own. I think he's fabulous. All righty. We're going to set him right up here, keep him safe and sound. Now we're gonna do a choice. We're gonna do, it's an ephemera choice. Where am I at? We're gonna start the choice off at $12. You can choose one pack, you can choose both packs. It's totally up to you. We have got two Victorian era uh, die cut and trade cards, okay? So these are the two packs that you'll choose from, okay? Let's go through this one. We're going to call this one the trading card because it does have some trading card that does have um, some postcards in it. We both have the Victorian era die, cut, die cuts. Now, I do want to let you know, in particular, this one, Bless, the two ladies, 
I don't know, the tea party didn't go too well. The tea party definitely didn't go too well because they're missing their hat. But then we have such things as the little pastoral scene. There is some of the mica glitter. You've got this little boy. I don't know. It's just going to be a random showing. We've got a vase. We've got, uh, what is this again? The mica glitter, the little spaniel. Um, look at this weird lady. I don't even know. That is horrifying, okay? We got little red one. We've got little cutouts that some lady did, you know, cause they would do their scrapbooking and stuff. Some are cut out from magazines, like this one here, the lake scene. Again, cut out from a tea and coffee advertisement. You of course are gonna get animals. Oh my gosh, look at this one. The little boxer, look, he's ready for his dinner. This one here, there is some tattering to that. Hey, Heidi, how are you doing today? We've got cats, we've got horses. And then we've got our, so let me just show you. I mean, you're getting all of this, you guys. It's not a skimpy little huge embossed floral. Uh, again, this one, oops, this one has our trading cards. This one is... Are you soa? <laughs> Coffee. <laughs> Wigwam. Smoking tobacco. This is a soap advertisement. Again, another wigwam. So, yeah, great for collaging. Great for whatchamacallit. Scrapbooking, junk journaling. You're going to get it all. There's this one. So it's quite a healthy stack of different die cuts and trading cards. So that is our trading card lot. And then the other one, while there are some trading cards in it, I'm calling it the die cut lot. This is the die cut lot. Um, this has got a lot in it. Okay. Like it's a solid inch of different die cuts. Let me make sure I don't. A lot of it is florals. We've got birds and sparrows. Uh, a lot were cut from newspapers, magazines, etc. I'm not really seeing any interest, so I'm just going to go ahead. We're not going to bother going through all of that business. I'm just going to set them both to the side, and we're going to keep it moving. We've got a lot to get through. Let me get these in I just made a giant mess. Bear with me. Oh, no. Okay. Well, flag. Anne and Miss Debbie Gutierrez are both in it. Okay. Um, this is heavy on the die cuts. This one is heavier on um, the trading cards. So those really are the two choices. All righty. All right, Miss Anne, you're actually holding it at 12, but Miss Debbie is also in it at 12. So ladies, thank you both for your bids. You can choose one or you can choose both. So Miss Anne, you're actually holding it at um, 12, okay? So let's do the countdown for you. So we'll do 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, two, one, and a bid end. So lots of die cuts, lots and lots of die cuts. And again, this one has the trading cards. Ladies, thank you both. Miss Anne, Miss Debbie, I'm seeing both of your bids now. There is our floral bouquet bid end. Thank you, Miss Ruthie B. So that means Miss Debbie Gutierrez, lady, at 18, you get your pick. Do you want the ones with the trading cards? Or do you want all die cuts with one or two trading cards? Or you could do both. It's totally up to you. But don't worry, Miss Ann's Attic. You do have a backup at 16. Congratulations. Miss Debbie is going for both. She is at $18 each, lady. Congratulations and thank you. Thank you, Miss Ann's Attic. 
Debbie, congratulations both are coming to you. This is quite the craft project. This is quite the craft project. Thank you, Debbie. Okay. Let's jump into our mini books. I'm calling this one kind of like, I have it labeled as the mini journal, but you're gonna get, um, you're gonna get two journals. No, you're getting one journal, one book in a different language, uh, a miniature encyclopedia and a very tiny Bible. Okay. We're going to start the whole lot off at $15. Now, I do want to let you know. So this is the Itty Bitty Bible, right? Um, the cover is just the black. Oh, here we go. And you can barely make it out, but it says Holy Bible. Here's the deal. It needs to be re-glued. Okay. So I do want to let you know that. It is still fully there. It's stapled. And it is... I mean, <laughs> you, you definitely need not just a microphone or a, a magnifying glass, but a microscope to read that one. So do keep that in mind. You get the very tiny Bible. Cover is there, but it does need to be re-glued, okay? Next up, we have got a souvenir. This is the from the State Fair of Shreveport, Louisiana. It's your fair, so be there. Now it is leather. You can see that it, it has aged, okay? It has aged. It's got a little snap on it. And we open that up and inside, I had one of these before. And inside we do have our little dictionary, okay? So there's all of the words in there. I don't have a copyright on this one. I feel like my other one, there was an inscription that helped me date it. It was printed in Germany. And this one, Hirsch and Lehman Company, booksellers and stationers of Shreveport, Louisiana. So they have their own little foil label that they put inside of it. So you get those two pop that back on. The third book that you're going to get is kind of like this faux leather. It's in a different language. Okay. Um, there is separation. Again, it's going to need glued. All right. I don't know what language this is. Oops. There was a bookmark that you will come. Thank you, Jenny. Gotcha. Um, I don't know. Does anybody recognize that language? holding it up there. So it's something to do of some religion. I'm not entirely sure. What fell out was the little silk bookmark here. Now, this one is in English. It is the Our Father. Oh, I'm showing you the back. It is the Our Father. Okay. Italian, of course. So we have our Our Father. It is a little silk bookmark that was in the book. So of course, that will remain in there for you. And then our fourth piece is our little journal. Now there is, of course, some signs of age to it, the little flap here, but when we open it, it is not just, the only thing I don't like about my old books, um, it is filled with all kinds of little journal entry. Look at the marbling on that. So let's see, here we go. It's just a daily journal that somebody kept. Not every day is filled out, but there is quite a bit that has been. Where am I going? Here is the calendar up front from 1890, 1890. So yes, you do get all of it. You can see the blank pages. There was some math in here and I was like, ah, where's it at? Boop. So about half of it is filled, okay? About half of it is filled. So you're going to get all four of those pieces. The Daily Journal from 1809. You're going to get the Italian, thank you all, the Italian religious book with the silk Our Father 
um, bookmark in it. You're going to get the Shreveport, Louisiana Miniature Dictionary. And I gotcha, thank you very much. And the last but not least, you are going to get the Tiny Treasure uh, Little Bible. But again, the cover does need to be glued back on there. So all one monies, kind of stack them up here. And this is what it looks like. Or you could do a little something like that. I love the aesthetic value on these spines. It's fabulous. All right. So we got Miss Jenny coming in at 15. Thank you again, lady. Miss Ann's Attic, I am seeing you at 16. Ladies, thank you so much. And let's go ahead and start the countdown. But again, it's for all four pieces. So 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, four, three, two, one, and a bid end. I love it too. I mean, it's totally subjective as to whether or not you like your books to look like this, but I think it adds a lot of character, aesthetic value. Oop, okay, Miss Anne, 18. Miss Jenny is not going to be out. Ooh, go ahead, Ruthie, with that calendar bid end. Well, gosh darn, Lisa girl, you got fast fingers. Jenny was playing it, but Miss Green came in with that bid of 21. Congratulations and thank you, Lisa. And again, these will go in your box from yesterday. At 21, they are the set is coming to you. All right, hi. Okay, I'm very proud of myself on this next item, y'all. If there is one thing that I just love, 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 it is um, toys, but what do I love even more than vintage toys are antique toys. Now, this is more of an antique game, okay? And I do actually collect um, books and some other games from this company. This is a good one, okay? I'm going to start it off at 20, okay? Boys and girls, what I have for you is an is a mid late 1800s it is the lotto oh shoot i just lost hold on let me grab that so i don't forget it we lost a lottery piece it's right there okay so we have got the mclaughlin brothers lotto okay look at the box it looks like a little steamer trunk like they've been traveling and they put a little sticker look a new york express london they've been to liverpool is that not the box alone y'all the box alone now it has some dings it has signs of its age right um the bottom is very plain so you know you could use it as a riser if you wanted to you could also play the game okay so mclaughlin brothers lotto we have a list of the contents that's not original to it but we've got little lotto sheets so as you call them out get it miss ann it's so cute. look at look at the way we, we, we look You've got all of the cards. All of the lotto cards are in it. Like, you can totally play this game. There are then, what you basically do, you know, you have your little chips. There's 107. These things are, it's the yellow, too. It's being really hateful. So you've got all of these little colored um, early plastic chips, and you would place it, you know, on your board. Okay. And then this is keeping track of the numbers that you've already called. But then inside, you would keep these little wooden number tabs, okay? You reach in and pull them out, and you that's how you play the game. I mean, it really is that simple. It's a very early or maybe, I guess, a little bit more complicated version of bingo, if you will. So there are 90. Look at 90, they're all in there, 90 
of the numbers, all of the wooden circles are in there. There are 107 of these plastic markers, okay? And there are 24 of the actual lottery and or bingo cards, okay? The set is complete. Let me show you the inside of it there. I mean, they're all mixed together at this point. So, you know, you reach in and you're like 86. Oh, how about that? And on the card, you've got 86. So then you take your plastic chip and put it over there. I mean, you can totally play this game. Thank you, Ms. Shenanigans. Thank you, Miss Ann. Appreciate you. It's complete. The box is fabulous in and of itself, too, just as the display piece. So you get the game. You get the displayability of the box. I think it's pretty wonderful and fabulous. All 90 numbers are in there. Thank you, Miss Ann. Okay, Miss Ann, and thank you, Miss Shenanigans. All right, let's go ahead and do the countdown. Let me put the box back on there. So it does have, show you this here. See how like that insert, that one did get folded down here. So the box, the lid goes over the top of it as such. I think that's fabulous. All right, let's do the countdown. Thank you ladies for the bids. Let's do it. So 20, 19, 18, 17, there is some tattering, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and a bid end. Again, keep track of your numbers. Oklas, Oklasum, coming in at, oh, shenanigans, almost, girl. And then all of your, oh, and got fast fingers. Ah, that was action packed at the end there. Thank you, Miss Ruthie B. Girl, what is that? Oh, she, we have got our luggage box. <laughs> our luggage box bid end. Thank you, Miss Ruthie B. That was fast paced at the end. So we had Anne, Oklasom, Shenanigan. Okay, but Miss Ant. But Miss Shenanigans, lady, congratulations and thank you with that just in case. At 31, the McLaughlin Brothers Lotto game is coming to you. Thank you. I hope you get the opportunity to play it at least once, right? At least once. Okay, the paper is shedding on me. All right, we've got another choice for you. Y'all, these are in pretty good condition. One of the choices, and unfortunately it is our earlier one, the cover is loose, but it is still present, okay? However, the contents are in very good condition. So now, I know when we're out and about, you know, we're shopping, we're going to the antique stores, the vendor places, the flea markets, you know, you see a lot of magazines. One of the most common magazines, I think, hey Jane, how are you? That you see are the Life magazines, right? It's like Life magazine, Life magazine, Life magazine. Well, I've got Life magazines for you, I do. We're gonna start the choice off at $12. The only difference between the two Life magazines that we have today and the ones that you see is that ours first, hey, I flipped that. First one is from 1901, November 14th of 1901. We have got a 123 year old, 123 years old Life magazine. Clearly, they are, did I write what one down? Um, clearly, they're much older than the ones we typically see. So this one, the cover is still attached. Our other Life magazine, this one is from June 14th of 1888. 
1888, math. 136 years old. Oh, who won the last rounds? It was Shenanigans. Shenanigans won the, um, simply Shenanigans won the, the lotto at 31. Why is that not? I'm pretty sure that's right. Hold on, we're scrolling. We're scrolling. Yes, because Anne had a bid of 30. Shenanigans had a just in case of 35. So that means, all right, let me check the computer. I got to scroll. Oh, yeah. Okay, I see. Shenanigans, I'm sorry on the lotto. I did just check the computer. The just in case did come in right after the bid end. So that means it's Miss Anne's Attic who got the uh, McLaughlin Brothers lotto at 30. So Anne's Attic, congratulations on the lotto. It is coming to you, lady, at 30. Okay. Thank you all for helping. Okay. So our 1888 Life magazine, the cover, unfortunately, it has become detached, but it is still present, okay? These are full, both are full of illustrations. The interior contents are in, in my opinion, excellent antique condition, especially for how fragile they are. Keep note that the numbers start at um, like page one, because that would be January of the year. And then the they just keep going throughout the year. That's why you're seeing weird page numbers. But it's just a great time capsule, a peek back at the past. There's some great illustrate. Look at this. This is a, a gatefold or a bifold. What is that? They're riding on an elephant. It says, will he do it? It's entitled, Will He Do It? Look at that. And again, this is our June of 1888. I mean, they are fully illustrated. They don't, obviously, they're not as big as what we are used to. They don't have as many pages as what we are used to. But, oh, look at this, the back. I love these. Okay, that was our 1888. Again, the cover has become detached. This is our November of 1901. Let me flip the back so I don't forget. I mean, y'all, it's 123 years old. I just, there's a little bit of water staining, but stop it. So those are your two choices, 1888 and 1901. Kind of started it a little bit lower in case somebody was really digging. Thank you, ladies. Appreciate those bids. So um, let's take a peek through this one. Again, fully illustrated. Look at that. Both of the covers are using this border. Okay. But then your center image obviously is different. But again, both are fully illustrated. Okay, let's flip it open and we'll, oh, here's, look at this. There is this one. It almost is giving me like Octavian Caesar here, this guy with the nose and like Cleopatra in chains vibe. And it just says an impressive performance. The American drama as leading lady. I mean, that is what it is. Because you see the laurel wreaths. Look at how indignant she is. Like, how dare you? And these guys are just back there jeering at her. So let's flip it open. What is it? Life's Board of Inquiry. The Sleeping Beauty and the Beast. An apt pupil, hickory dickory duck, the mouse ran up the clock of the stocking and then he ran down again when he found it was only a sock. Okay. Oops. 
There's some great illustrations in both of these. So, and of course, a divertisement. All right, we got Miss Anne's Attic holding it down at 13. It is for choice. Uh, I did see one in the, which one is this? The 1901. There's a that big illustration, um, racially insensitive. So do keep that in mind. I mean, it's just, it's a sign of the time. So, all right. 1901 intact and again our elder at 1888 the cover unfortunately has come loose okay so it is for choice miss ann's attic is holding it down at 13. you do one you do both let's do the countdown so 20 19 18 17 16 15 14 13 12 11 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and a bid end. I will say with the 1888, the one with the, it just seems quite frankly, like it wasn't actually torn. It just kind of separated because of age, you know? Ooh, Miss Melinda coming. Ooh, Melinda, you had good timing on that one, sister. Thank you for our heart a bit and Miss Ruthie B. Um, appreciate you, Miss Ann. Melinda, you almost had it, but Wings came in. She threw it down. All right, Miss Wings at $18. Would you like the 1901? Would you like the 1888? Or would you like both? You let me know. I love the perimeter image on these. Oh, Miss Wings is going for both. Lady, congratulations and thank you. I sure do appreciate you. Wings, you're getting them both. Let me slide them back into their little cardboard plastic sleeves here. Keep those nice and safe, especially our elder. Get in there, you. Slowly but surely, slowly but surely. Okay. Ooh, y'all, this next book. Ooh. I really, truly didn't. Okay, I'm going to have to do that later. Otherwise, we'll be here all day. <laughs> this next book. Mm, mm. Subject matter, subject matter, subject matter. Okay. Let's do it. We're going to start this book off at $18. Um, Y'all are going to have to help me with the religion or religion with the language if you recognize it. All right. Let's take a look at the back. It's a beautifully embossed, relatively simple um, back on it. Okay, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. All right, we do have a little. Oh, that's not a split. Okay, my bad. <laughs> Those are the pages, Michael. <laughs> um, here is our spine. I don't know if anybody recognizes the language from here. Okay, we have gold gilding, clearly a little bit worn. We flip it over to the front. Look at that. This is full Roman revival. German. It is German. German. This is copyrighted 1868. Now, I can't clearly read German, but when we go in here, this is illustrated. Let me show you the copyright. Okay. Okay. So here is our copyright, 1868. This has something to do with the Roman Empire. Now, I'm going to tell you this. Nobody is naked. Everybody has their fig leaves on there, okay? But you are going to see all of these black and white illustrations throughout. And it's all like these Roman sculptures. So, again, we've got a German, something to do with Roman life, Roman statuary. I don't know. Maybe somebody, if anybody reads German out there, you can tell us what it is.
you recognize that? I don't know. Get it, Miss Deborah. Um, but it does have illustrations. Let's see if I'm going to be lucky enough to flip to them. Okay, like here's one. Thank you, Miss Deborah. I see at 18. There's Medusa, Seer. But these are all that, like, there's a bunch. Look, there's this gatefold one, two. I just have to be very careful. Look at that. It folds out. Like I said, they're all wearing their little fig leaves. So that's our little gatefold. But then there's just all kinds of these. I mean, you see the style in which the illustrations are done. Here's another one. The tragedy of it all. He is definitely flexible. Or maybe he's just dead. I don't know. Maybe Greek. Yeah. It's the German Greek Kama Sutra. Could be. I don't know. It's just really unusual. Here we've got. Lady on bowl. So there is some boxing, but the spine and pages, there's no shaking on it. So overall, I would say good, fair, antique condition. Again, copyrighted 1868. German, thank you all for identifying that. Um, German that has something to do with Roman Greek life. Can't really tell. Apparently we're making, the men like to do everything with fig leaves. They believed in freedom. They said no boxers, no briefs. Maybe that's where that's where Fruit of a Loom came from. I don't know. Um, again, there's foxing, but there's no rips, tears, pencil marks that I have identified to the book. Oh, I'm back. Don't worry. YouTube was checking it. They were like, are they naked? Oh, here's the slang of the Minotaur. So like Greek myths, a study of Greek myths. You see the Minotaur down here? And they're welcoming back their hero. Hi, Diane. How are you doing today? So subject matter is just fabulous. You might not be able to read it, but the illustrations are quite provocative. I don't know if we showed this one before or not, but I'm back to it. These are great. I love it. I had to snatch this one up. We have a chariot. I mean, this is showing us some kind of battle or war. Like over here, they're clearly fighting. I don't know, this guy's gotten taken prisoner or he is being rescued off the battlefield, one or the other. <laughs> All right, well, let me catch up to you. So I am only seeing, where am I at? I don't know. Miss Deborah Williams is in at 18. Lady, thank you so much. I only see one person interested. So we're going to do a 10 second countdown. Again, it's something German to do with Greek life, Roman mythology. A whole, maybe it's just a Roman Greek study kind of book, but love the illustration. So 10 second countdown. 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and a book be end. I like books with pictures. I sure do. I just thought it was really fascinating. Come here, you. They're playing marbles or something. Early Parcheesi. Roman bid end. Thank you, Miss Ruthie B. Do appreciate ya. Let's see if we can do one more picture. Here's one more picture to leave it on. What is this one going to be? Oh, Ruthie, it actually fits in with your bid end. How about that, girl? Look. Oh, that horse. Listen to his face. Miss Deborah Williams, lady, congratulations and thank you. At 18, the book, it's coming to you. All right. All right, let's jump back to some glass. All right. This is our last piece of glass for the sale. Yes, it is, boys and girls. But it's a bigger piece. I mean, not huge or anything like that. 
We're going to start it off at just $20 if anybody is interested. It is a large rose bowl. And by large, I mean it is six inches tall. Bam. So we've got like this painted ombre glass, right? Uh, a white like milk glass with the yellow on the top, okay? I do have a scuff mark over here, so I'm going to try to clean that off for you. My apologies. Um, there are no chips. There are no cracks to the glass. So this is like the simpler side. Again, that is six inches tall. That's a big old rose bowl. But when we turn it around, we do have our transferred image. This is not hand painted. If it was hand painted, we would have started that way higher. But this one is a transfer image. We do have kind of like our Botticelli um, styled cupids here on the front. They're in some sort of a garden. You bought the baby last week. What baby? I love this one. I love the subject matter. It goes great um, with Miss Deborah's book. I mean, you stack this with this kind of book, especially like with this kind of subject matter. I absolutely love it. It's a bit more traditional in its styling, but again, there are no chips, there are no cracks. Let's get up close and personal. No chips, no cracks on the glass, okay? And we do have a very classic um, Cupid scene here, cherub, I should say, cherub scene on the front. Again, it is not hand painted. See if I can pick up the dots. You can kind of, we're going to get up close and personal here. You can kind of see the dots in the baby's folds in the brown there. Um, the brown is picking it up the best. But again, it is a transfer image. It is not hand painted. Get it, Miss Melinda at 20. Appreciate you, lady. Six inches tall. So this is not, you know, a tiny little, you know, traditionally you see them yay big, about half the size, three inches for your rose bowl. This one is definitely much larger. But again, gorgeous yellow. This is painted on. Okay. Ombre down into that white satin with our transfer image, which there's no deep gouges or scratches to that image. It is still on there nice and clean. Love it. It is very springy. So if you don't really like the whole cherub scene to it, you can always turn it around. Nikki Moss, how are you doing? Welcome back, Dusty. Uh, you can certainly turn it around and display it as such. But I agree with you. Um, very springy. It's bright. It's cheerful. That yellow really does a lot for it. So I think large bloomed flowers in here would be absolutely beautiful. I think a white lilac would be stunning in this one. All right, Ms. Jenny Weaver is coming in at 22. Ladies, I thank you both for your bids. Um, six inches tall, no chips, no cracks on it. It is hand blown, okay? Uh, they did grind it down. It's not perfectly sanded by any means or polished. You can feel a divot right here to it, but at least the attempt was there. All righty, let's do it. Countdown time. So 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one and a bid end. These babies do not look like Putin. No, they do not. Um, yeah, for anybody inquiring, um, Dayton and Columbus, the, it, the airports are about the same, about an hour. So it all just depends on where you're flying from. So you could do a, a Dayton or a Columbus if you ever wanted to visit um, the area. Thank you for the yellow heart, Cupid, Angel, a bid end, Miss Ruthie B. Jenny, almost had a girl at 22, but Miss Melinda came in with that just in case of 30. So at 23, Miss Melinda lady, congratulations and thank you. It is coming to you. Let me get your written down. Okay. 
what is this? Okay, 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 okay. Um, we're gonna do some artwork next. It is one of a kind. Alrighty, I'm gonna sell this set. I just don't have, I was gonna do toys and then I was like, I don't really have the heart to divide these up, okay? Uh, I just don't, I don't have the heart. Um, so you're gonna get this set. You're gonna get this set. Did I say three or four? Let me get these down here. All right, it is a set of four. You were gonna get the entire set of four, okay? Um, all one monies, there's no choice. They are collages that were put together um, in the 60s and man, 60s, 70s. They really show it. Now, I will say this. Um, you know, it was the whole free love kind of thing. So I'm going to do my best to cover certain parts, but I am going to use discretion. I'm not going to cover any, everything. I just physically aren't going to be able to. So, you know, if you don't like nudity, look away, get your snack, take your break. It's totally up to you. Okay, we're going to start the four piece set. You're getting all four at $30. You are, I'm going to show you the backs first. You were going to get three in this size. Okay, you were going to get three 14, 14 by 11s. Okay, you're getting three 14 by 11s. It's this size, 14 by 11s. You are going to get one. 20 by 10. One, 20 by 10. All righty. But you do get all four. Let's start here. Look at this collage. Look at that. I mean, tell me that's not like 60s, 70s. Okay. Uh, we do know the artist's name. This was done for a college project. This is from Richard N. Cunningham. Richard N. Cunningham, and he studied at the Dayton Art Institute uh, and graduated April 26th of 1968, all right? Unfortunately, Mr. Cunningham has passed away, all right? So again, from the Dayton Art Institute of 1968, all right? There is one, ain't no fig leaves on these. Um, next one is definitely provocative. It's definitely provocative. Um, there is a particular scene where nothing is exposed, but it's definitely like, it's very political. And so there is that one. Okay. They're not exposed, but it's, it's very provocative. We got this guy, his booty is showing. Okay. We got her being held by the panda. So again, very evocative of the 60s. So that is two. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> number three. So this is a, a pair of hands holding a butt. This is a pair of hands holding a butt. But look at this. Get it, Misty Pate. Look at this. Isn't this fabulous art, though? Look at Jim Morrison. With the targets, the aboriginals with the targets on their back. And there's an egg in the nest with the eyeballs and the indigenous folks with targets. And basically you have, I mean, I can, I actually can see this. Like, I see this one too, right? It's the prostitute, the pro, is, is that an adjective? The prostitute institutionalization, the prostitutionalization 
I think I get credit for that. The prostitutization of America, again, in the 60s, you know, you got those crooked politicians out there, right? First one was just very music-y. This one I am seeing as kind of colonial colonialism, right? The kind of taking over of indigenous peoples. Um, you have a pair of white hands clearly on um, an African's butt. So we'll just do whoop. Okay. <laughs> Get it, Denise. They're beautifully done. Okay. Now this one, we do have some booba loobies. Um, this one up here is the Maryland, the Playboy spread. And then we've got her down here, those strategic. This one to me is speaking of cinema. First one was music. This one we've got like the cinema. There's Betty Davis, Bette Midler, again, Marilyn Monroe. Look at this guy peeping at the, it's a cartoon now. So this one is the 20 by 10, 20 by 10. And then you're gonna get three of the 14 by 11s. There's that one. I don't monetize this sale, so <laughs> there's this one. And then that first one, which I feel is like more music. I, they're one of a kind. They're one of a kind. And what I will do is I'm going to include the note. Um, again, Richard N. Cunningham, who graduated from the Dayton Art Institute April 26 of 1968. And unfortunately, he has since passed off. Now, they're definitely cut out, Smith. Um, so you can, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it. It's definitely a collage. So it is the original. Like, if you put your, you can feel the layers, right? You can feel the layers. This is a really good example. This particular image is like textured. And then he put this one behind it. So it is the actual collage. It is the actual collage. All right. Let me catch up to you guys. Again, you're going to get all four. I just, I can't break these up. I think that they need to stay together. By the way, the rhino was also from Mr. Cunningham's collection. So one, two, three. Oh, well, here we go. And four. Down here, you can see that one needs glued back. So this image, I never even noticed that. This image has gotten, needs to be glued back. Oh, no, that's Greg Allman. This guy, I'm pretty sure that's, that's uh, Greg Allman. Is that who you're talking about, girl? Look, this guy has been brutally beaten. <laughs> I just, they're special. They're unique, you know? There's somebody's creativity, and nobody else quite literally is going to have them. Yeah, Greg. Yep, that's Greg. All right, Melinda has got the set. You're getting all of them at 33. Thank you all for the bids. Um, definitely have never brought in you one of a kind art, but don't worry, we've got one more piece. One more piece. All right, let's do it. So uh, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one and a bid end. And just like the, the other flats, what you do, we'll wrap these, you know, in paper. They get wrapped in a sheet of bubble. They're put in between cardboard and then put in a vinyl bag. So it keeps it nice, safe, and sound. There is our art bid end. Thank you, Miss Ruthie B. I really do appreciate it. I'm sad to see these go because I really do you know, I value them as art pieces. I really, truly do. Um, so thank you guys. I'm glad that 
y'all, some of y'all were out there that were interested. Misty came in at 35. Melinda had her just in case of 40, but Denise, she came in with her just in case of 55. So at 41, Denise lady, what an amazing get, one of a kind. Congratulations and thank you. All right. What are we at? 41, 41, 41, 41. All right. You got it, Denise, lady. All right. Let's do this. What do we got? We've got a mini book lot. All right. Boo, boo, boo. I think they're they're fabulous. Those were um, this. I got them at an auction. This was what caught my eye. I mean, clearly all of those bright colors. How is it not going to catch your eye? And it was like a whole flat. I do have some other things um, from that flat that are going to be available in today's sale. So I kind of he. It seems that he collected quite a different bit of different kinds of things from different eras. And I kind of grouped them together. So they're all coming from Mr. Cunningham. All righty. So up next, we've got a four piece lot. You're going to get all four. I'm calling it the mini book lot. And again, I'm going to start this at $18. Now you're getting three that are pretty cool, but there is one that is just like the superstar. So here's a glimpse. All right, this particular one is the one, this the smallest. These two do have some substantial wear, but just so that you can get a quick look. All right, and again, it is for all four. Let's go ahead and start with the ones with the worst condition. Our smallest book, okay, bless it. It is a religious book, but it is separated. Uh, I have a loose page. So this is stitched together. It is in very delicate condition. You can see that is stitched together. You could glue it back on if you wanted, but it is a little pocket prayer book. Okay. Just kind of like daily affirmations that you would keep in your pocket. So again, it, it is going to need repaired or it's just going to need protected, right? It needs the right steward to keep it safe at this point. I don't have a copyright on this one, all righty? The other one that has condition issues, this you can see it says seasons, but then like the spine has gotten pulled, okay? Very plain, looks like at some point somebody got hungry. Um, there is an inscription. This one is dated, are you ready for it? 1836. 1836. So what is that? 182, right? No. I don't know. It's real old. It's almost 200 years old. So we open this one up. Um, and it's got like poetry and prose for the season. So you've got winter, spring, summer, and fall. And again, it's like a poetry, 188. Go ahead, Molly, get that math. It's 188 years old. All righty. Bug, you were born that? Get it. You're doing good. Melinda, I got you at 20. Miss Ann at 21. So again, it is a poetry book of the seasons divided into, of course, the four seasons. Um, again, some condition issue, it's still on there, bless it. And again, copyrighted 1836. And there is some, obviously there is some foxing, okay? So the seasons by James Thompson, to which is prefixed the life of the author. Oh, so we've got the life of the author up here. And then boom, we go right into spring. Come gentle spring, ethereal mildness. Come and from the bosom of you dropping cloud, while music wakes around, veiled in a shower, shadow 
of showering roses on our plains descend. O oh, here at Ford, fitted or to shine in courts with unaffected grace, or walk the plain with innocence and meditation joined in soft assemblage, listen to my song, which thy own season pains when nature all is blooming and benevolent like these. So spring, autumn, thrilled in her thought they, like the dewy star of evening shone in tears, a naive grace sat fair proportioned on her polished limbs, veiled in a simple robe their best attire, beyond the pomp of dress, for loveliness needs not the foreign aid of ornament. So again, poetry for the season. Thank you all for the bids, Miss Melinda, Miss Anne. All right, let's talk about our largest book. This is called Little Flyaway Series. Little Grandmother, Little Purdy's, literally Purdy, like Purdy. It's like our Purdy. Little Purdy's Flyaway Series, Little Grandmother. There is your spine. Gorgeous turquoise with gold and black. Our book here is copyrighted. This is illustrated. I don't know if I have. 1870. 1870. 154 years old. I have a loose page. It's literally like that cover page right in here. There is the beginnings of separation, okay? So it's a little children's book. Again, you can see this has got a little bit larger font, making it a little bit easier to read. We will go right here. Um, chapter six, a witch fright. Patty had forgotten all about her deep mortification and never even thought of Deacon Turner, the, tilt, the tithing man. Hark, whispered she to Mary. Don't you hear him? It says hear him. Okay, it says hear him. Don't you hear him walking on the roof of the house? Hear what? said Mary sternly. Those things Siller calls creatures on broomsticks, returned Patty. Nonsense. Go to sleep, child. Mary was too well instructed to be really afraid of witches. Still, she lay awake on an hour or two thinking over what Siller had said and hearing her cough drearily in the next chamber. Little Patty was sleeping sweetly, but Mary's nerves were quivering, and she did not know why. And, to quote, all things were full of horror and of fright, and dreadful even the silence of the night. And I do want to just point out one little quick thing. Creatures. See it? Creatures. Fascinating. We got Patty's Sunday. Patty did all the things, apparently. Little grandfather. Okay. And then our last book. This is like, this for me, thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Anne. This one's kind of like the star of the show. Look at it. So darling. Uh, yeah, it is called, um, it's called Little Grandmother. Little Grandmother. And it is from the Little Purdy's Fly Away series. Okay. Here is your little star of the show. It's called the Chaplet of Flowers. Look at that. Very simple. It's not, you know, overdone, but is that not darling or what? What is that? Like two and a quarter? We're close to three. Oh, we're three and a fourth. Three and a fourth inches on that one. It's so cute. All right, where are we at? I have okay, this I this does not have a copyright. So we do have an inscription of July 14th of 1899, okay? To Miss Marjorie Ruth Ball from that person. Um, that doesn't look like July. Janny, what in the world? June? Junes? It's from July 4th, something 14th, 1899. What it is... 
It is a chaplet of flowers comprising a scripture text, text with a gem of thought illustrating its meaning for every day in the year. It's the American Tax Society. You know what that means. Like, behave yourself as accordance to religious belief, okay? Um, so here we go. Let's start with January. I Thank you guys for the bids, and then I'm going to go ahead and start the countdown. So let's start the, the year off, all right? Riches are but like the leaves of a tree, beautiful for a season, but winter storms arise, they fall off and are blown away. That's from Bishop Reynolds. Matthew 7, 1. Judge not that ye be not judged. Those are the best Christians who are most careful to reform themselves than to censure others. In other words, censure your, oh, um, behave yourself and don't try to make other people behave, right? Can I look at April? Sure. March. It's going to be a random April. It doesn't, okay. Um, Thou he slay me, yet will I trust in him. That is Job 13, 15. What a God, what a God honoring thing to see a struggling, souring child of earth cleaving fast to God, calmly trusting in him, happy and at rest in the midst of storm and sufferings. What a spectacle for the host of heaven. Now then, in this time, for the saints to give glory to the Lord their God, let them prize affliction as the very time and opportunity for doing so most of all. If we suffer, we shall also reign in him. So there you go. No, this is this is the literally kind of the days of the year. This one is the poetry for the seasons. This is our little miniature um, religious daily affirmations. And then we've got little grandma here. So that is all three of the books. Okay. You're going to get all three. All right, y'all. Thank you for the bids. It jumped on me. Y'all were digging this one, weren't you? I know. I told you it was a superstar. Superstar. Actually, I'm just wearing it now. Richard's friend Tammy gave us like a whole collection of them because she knows we love. Because Richard will wear these too. So we got quite a few of these. Um, I'm going to start rocking them all the styles. All right. Let's do Miss Ann, Miss Susie. Get it, get it. Thank you, ladies. Let's do the countdown. You're getting all four of the books. Here we go. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and a bid end. Yeah, I really like it. It was hard because I like the darker colors personally. Miss Anne, we got ooh, ooh, uh oh, oh, Dusty. There is our book bid end. Thank you, Miss Ruthie B. Appreciate you. All the just in cases in that last second. Miss Anne, Miss Melinda, but she pulled it off just in the just in the nick of time. So, Dusty Lady, congratulations at 51. The book lot, it's coming to you, lady. Thank you. All right. I got to speed it up. My goodness, I've been talking a lot today. Okay. Where are we going to go next? All right. We're going to do this lot. And again, this is coming from Mr. Cunningham. Okay. Now, these are advertisements that he collected as well as prints. So you're gonna get the whole shebang. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna start it at $20. What you're gonna get, this one is entitled A Sleep on the Avenue. Now he did cut this particular one out of a larger uh, book. We can see it here on the back. So he did cut that one off, all right? Sleep on the Avenue. I can't pronounce some of these. Now, he removed these from a print book. Okay. It looks like it's some kind of propaganda poster or something. I don't know. 
But I, I mean, these are totally frame worthy. So that is two pieces. Piece number three, look at how beautiful and bright. I just loved the graphics on these. So that'll be three pieces. And then we have the prints that are mounted. So this is on like this paper, but then you can pop this off and frame it if you would like. I love this little guy. He's giving me like um, Tony Soprano vibes to him. This is a great one. I love that one. So now we're up to four. Here is number five. Again, like with our Sopranos one, you can pop this off if you would like to frame. I just love the colors in this. This one is entitled. How many is that? That's five. So there's six, seven, eight. You're going to get all eight. I just, I agree. The colors are just so beautiful and vibrant. This is fun. Continental Inquiry. Office at Victoria is the bridge to delights of holidays abroad. This one's beautiful. Look at that. Again, you can separate that if you want to frame it. I love those colors. So deco on these. And then this is our final. Clearly, most of them are in a foreign language. We had the bridge. The bridge of, to delights was in English. Thank you, Wings. So you do get all of them. There is no separation. There is no choice. You have eight with which to receive. We got Wings in it at 20. They're just, I mean, they're all beautiful. Ooh. Wings is in it. Oh, Wings is in it at 20. We got it. And I only see Wings interested. So we're going to go ahead and do a 10 second countdown. But this is for the lot. Okay. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one and a bid end. Oh, it's yeah, it's immediate um, gallery wall. Instant gallery wall right here. Wings got your just in case. You did not need it. Thank you for the cap bid end, Miss Ruthie B. Wings, congratulations and thank you at $20. They're coming to you. Wings, do yourself a favor. When you get that, Google lends it. You got a great deal, lady. Congratulations and thank you. They are coming to you. All right. Wings. All righty. We're going to do a big ephemera lot. Now, Richard and I paired together, Mr. Cunningham and I paired together to bring this next ephemera lot to you. The vast majority of it is things that he pulled together and then I added a few things in it for you, but you are going to get everything, okay? I'll show you the stuff that I added. I added three pieces. Yes, I added three pieces and then we'll show you the rest, but this is for the entire ephemera and this is a, pardon me, a larger size ephemera lot, okay? but you are gonna get multiple pieces. I am gonna start this one also off at $20. Let's look at our big one. First and foremost, bam! We've got our, um, what I believe is a German die cut. It is a very large piece. This is embossed, okay? 
Um, you could hang this with the little pass through right there. I didn't do a measurement on it. I feel naughty. It is 15 and a half inches by 11 and a half inches. That's just, so get it, girl. Y'all don't even know. You just like in this one, right? I have had this forever. So this is something that I added in, okay? It is clearly, it's a large one, all right? This is something that I added in. It is a little, I don't even know. It's a little calling card. It's Ann Smith's patent duplex grate, removable without displacing brick are embodied in the happy thoughts for you. I just... So we got our little kids here, kind of Christmassy. Thank you, Miss Ann. Thank you, Bobby, Lisa, gotcha. There's that. Okay, next piece I think is very special. Um, look at this. It's a husband's heart. See the little silk ribbon on it? Y'all, look. E, it's a little poetry. Is that not the most precious thing ever? It's in really good antique condition. You know, 1800s on it. It's so pretty and darling. Look at this one. Look at this one. The sparrow in the poppy field. Little buds to blossoms bursting. Flourish in love's soil. Father, mother, gardener's training. Life leaves to uncoil. Okay. Little winter scene. And then there's, oh, do I have a? It's the Art Lithographic Publishing Company out of New York. Printed in Munich, but it isn't, I don't have a date. I don't have a date. So we put that one in there. So those are the those are the three pieces that I added in. Did I mention that I have like a ridiculous amount of ephemera? So that's those three pieces alone. Okay. Let's see what Richard is contributing, Mr. Cunningham. First up, now there is some waffling on this one. Um, I do want to let you know that, but it is a hand painted. So it was, ex I don't know if it's because of the watercoloring, perhaps Richard did it, but it is a hand watercolored postcard. We can see underneath, again, it is a postcard, but then it was hand watercolored on top of it. And I think they did. A beautiful job. Okay. Look at that. So it did, you know, the water did create some rippling to it, but I think if it were framed, it would flatten itself out. How about we do some beautiful 1920s black and white fashion ads? Look at that. Let's add in some sheet music with amazing graphics on it. Look at that. Drifting. Shiver me timbers. Isn't she beautiful, though? But again, it's sheet music. You all know the deal with that, right? Um, I don't have a date, but it does have a full color back. Okay. Ooh, look at this one. How about some French beauty products? This is from Ladies Home Journal. Of, <coughs> oh, pardon me. Ladies Home Journal of 1924. So, Miss, I have got Lisa highlighted, but Miss Anne's holding it down at 42. Appreciate it. So, beautiful French cosmetics advertisement. But check it out. There's also an early Pyrex advertisement on the back. So if you prefer the Pyrex, but again, Ladies Home Journal, where am I at? There we go. Ladies Home Journal of April, 1924. 
we're going to throw in a parade magazine, you know, the Sunday paper um, insert. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to throw one of those in. It is from August 5th of 1973. And this is really ironic. It is on Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe. Why won't they let, let her rest in peace? That's a great question. So why don't we go ahead and write one more article for our parade magazine insert? Makes sense. Um, so you're also going to get that included. It is fully intact. Okay. Look at that one. Norma Jean. That's a beautiful. I'm seeing that. Norma Jean. And last but not least, this is totally random, but do you remember going into like the restaurants back in the day? And you know, the um the placemat that they would put, you know, like the diners, and they would put the paper a placemat down. Yeah, well, we have one. And this stuff is really collectible, but it is the story of Anne Jemima. Y'all, it's a paper placemat. But it's the full-on story of Anne Jemima. It's a paper placemat. Look at Tell me that doesn't bring back some memories, okay? So that is, I know it's really random, but gosh darn. I mean, we've got 1800s, turn of the century. We're up into the 70s, y'all. All right, but you're going to get everything. It was, was it the Aunt Jemima that really did it in for you? I mean, who collects? That's what, because who held on to that? You know, who held on to that? Richard Cunningham did. He sure did. He saw value in it somehow, some way. He did. But you were going to get everything, you guys. Thank you for the bids. I'm going to go ahead and start the countdown as I place it all back in. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, one, and a bid end. And of course, you get it all, boys and girls. You get it all. The bids, the just in cases. Thank you, everybody, so much. Do appreciate you. I sure do. Girl, what is that? It's our pancake bid end. <laughs> Ruthie said, I want a pancake. A pancake don't sound too bad right now, does it, right? Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Miss Ruthie, for the bid. And where are we at? So, Anne, Miss Lisa, but Anne, Zoe, almost Miss Glowy, she did her thing at 56. Congratulations and thank you, Glowy. It is coming to you. And thank you, everyone for your bids. All right. Get you written down here. Okay, we're moving forward. Let's do some pottery. All right. My 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 only piece of pottery, so I decided I needed to make it a good one. Um <laughs> I want a pancake too. It sounds really good. All right, let's do it. We are going to start our next piece off at $40. Okay. Um, there is a tiny nick in it. I do want to let you know. It is, in fact, stamped Weller. All right. It is part of their Baldwin. Bye, Pammy. It is part of their Baldwin Apple series. Okay. So we've got our double-handed, double-handed, double-handed uh, floral vase. You could use it as a bud vase. You could, I mean, by rights, I guess you could use it as a candlestick. Keeping in mind, there's, it goes all the way down in there. Now, our nick is right here. Do you see it? It's right there. It is there. It is there. Right there. Otherwise, it's in great condition. Pattern is front and back. 
you've heard me say it before and I will say it again. What I love, um, 1930s um, is the era. What I love about Weller, um, especially when they did like their must, the, what is it? The musket, musket, muscatane, the Baldwin apple, the woodcraft. Um, when it came to the glazes, they used like a really watery glaze. So when it was painted on, it really created like this watercolor effect. Um, you know, it's picking up the sculptural detailing without being very defined. Um, you know, we see the branches, we see the leaves, we see the apple. And while there is red glaze, red paint on it, it's not like super saturated. Um, which is what I really love about it. You know, you get a little bit more of the red on this apple versus this one. Um, there's no paint loss to it. That is all under the glaze, but I just, I absolutely love them. Woodcraft, I do love the woodcraft. I actually have quite a few of the Baldwin apple pieces myself. The Baldwin and woodcraft, I think really play really well together because they're very foresty kind of theme, color palette, same, similar. Um, now on our bud vase here, this is coming in at exactly seven inches, an exact seven inches, okay? Again, stamped Weller from the 30s, upside down, from the 30s, and it does have the nick on the interior. Actually, I have two nicks, I apologize. Where am I at? One, two, see them? I still feel good about the 40, to be honest with you. There, we can kind of see both. There's one, and then there's two. I still feel confident in that 40, right? <clears throat> So seven inches tall, Weller from the 1930s. I don't see any interest on that one. So I'm going to set that aside and we are going to keep it moving. All right. Now, this is the next book. <laughs> the next, oh, oh, Linda, oh, Ruthie. Ruthie, are you bidding on it, girl? Is that, okay, Ruthie and Linda are both in it. Ruthie's got it at 45 so I'm going to do, I will do the 20 seconds since we got two ladies interested. So, okay, Miss Ruthie, let's do the countdown for y'all. Here we go. So 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and a bid end. Ruthie's still holding it at 45. Linda, I see your 45 also. Ruthie got her just in case in. And there it thank you, Kim, for our Starshine bid end. Linda, I sure do appreciate your bid, but Miss Ruthie got that first 45 in. So congratulations and thank you, Ruthie, at 45. Lady, it is coming to you. I'm going to, I'll add that into um, your box also. Thank you. All right. So, okay. Oh, come on. Well, I know it's going to a good home. Next book. This is, um, it is very desirable um, in some circles. Uh, definitely, if you love the macabre, if you love, like, uh, people people that love kind of like that spooky, dark, macabre vibe get into it because of the graphics, the title of it. However, when you actually read it, it's not actually what it necessarily presents itself to be. Okay. Oh, well, I'm glad. Um, it is a very desirable book. Okay. Um I am going to start it at 45, okay? Now, <clears throat> it does have some discoloration back here on the back. All righty. Discoloration. Um, there you are in totality on the back. 
there is a little give right here on this one. You can kind of see a divot. So again, I'm just on this one, I want to show you just, I'm going to get really nitpicky with this one. So we do have a divot. We show it to you this way. Okay. Um, the spine, the binding, really good condition. It's not shaken, so it's not separating. Are you ready for it? It is the devil of today. <laughs> so, again, if you're kind of into the dark, the spooky, the Halloween, the macabre, you know, clearly you can see why a lot of those collectors would really be into it. Um, I like the kind of like these are a little bit more provocative because you like look at it and you're like, excuse me. But here we are in the front. It is the devil of today. Notice today. How he works in the home, the church, in businesses, and in every walk of life. So we pull back. There's a full cover. This is an illustrated book. Okay. So basically, it is illuminating how the devil works, you know, how, how, how is evil in our lives. Get thee behind me, thou evil one. For any weapon formed against me shall not prosper. Look at me. Look at this. It is an absolutely stunning book. Okay. We are copyrighted in 1906. 1906. We have excerpts copyrighted in 1903 by I Ment Chambers. However, this book, this is a first edition to this book. It is 1906. Okay. Get it, Dusty. You will have some. Let me give you table of contents. So as I said, the book is illustrated. Dusty, I do see you at 45, okay? Contents, uh, the bridge of sides, a guardian angel meets the antagonist of souls, a vast company cross the bridge, okay. Um, The thirst for riches, a disease of the times, the lessons and obligations of wealth, the temper and the tempted, hypocrite has a troublesome dream, Satan hears good news, evangelist and the minister discuss municipal government, hypocrite is taken care of in the hands of his friends. Okay, that was pretty long. Uh, we've got running past the signals, the Broken Cogs, The Devil's Laboratory, The Devil's Poisoned Arrows, The Divorce Bureau, The Worship of Other Gods, Reeks along, Rex, pardon me, along the, the, Rex along the shore, His Majesty's Charity Fund, um, The Pilgrim Scars, The Good Angel's Pity, Man of the world under the light, saved as by fire, the opening of the heavy gate. So again, this is an illustrated book. It's going to be black and white. The illustrations are going to be glossy. So they have the finish, I don't know, the sheen to them. Whereas the text, it is your, your typical uh, paper pulp, okay? Um, D. Little. I... You know, I don't know. Is there an international media? I believe there is international media. So this book is going to, I think I can get this in 11 by 8 by 6 if I'm not mistaken. Nope, I can't. It's too long. So this book more than likely will go in a 12 by 9 by 10. Um, if you haven't received certain books, I will put in boxes just because I get nervous. This is... Um, a book that's going to go into a box. However, it's going to ship media mail. So that's the beauty of it. Again, we've got black and white illustrations throughout, moral lessons in regards to the devil's corruption, 
how the devil's influence is in our societies, our personal lives, even in the church, the home, in business. So it really is moral lessons, oops, on what to be on the lookout for. Um, again, you see some like yellowing of the pages, but I don't want to call it foxing. It's not typical foxing. But definitely some interesting illustrations in here. All right, Dusty and Anne, I gotcha. Anne is in it at 48. Again, it is copyrighted 1906. It is first edition, The Devil of Today. And let's go ahead and start the countdown. So here we go. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, where's that at? 13, where? 12, <laughs> 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and a bid end. There's a lot of illustrations. The gossip. Don't gossip. What, what is she doing over here? Is she trying to steal something? Is that what's going on? What can he do, replied Miss Hypocrite. There's our devil bid and thank you, Miss Ruthie B. Ladies, thank you both for your bids. I do appreciate you. Dusty at 47 and at 48, but Dusty, girl, you've got good timing. Um, with that, just in case of 86, at 49, Dusty, oop, almost removed you, girl. At 49, it is coming to you. Thank you. All righty. Okay, let's do this. We've got some die cuts. Now, these are clearly, these are the new ones. Um, they are reproductions of the antique ones, though they are still Bystel Company, okay? So we're, I'm going to sell the entire lot. These are from 2012, by the way. That's weird. These are 11 years old, which is very odd. So what you're going to get, these are all still in package. You're going to get two of the black cats, two of the black cats. You're going to get one, one of the cat band. And they're all in there. There's four. You're going to get all four. And the piece de resistance. Are you all ready for it? This one. Look at that. You get all of those weirdos in there. How many is that? Two, four, seven. Look at the cat with the devil mask. So you do get all of those in there also. Okay. Ah! Again, these are 2012. They are official Bystel products. Okay, look at that. You have the original copyrights on those. That is fabulous. Oh, this one's 2018. Well, hold on. This one's 18, this one's 2012, and the cats are 2012. So you're going to get all of it. You do get everything, okay? All still in their packaging. Um, we're going to do, we're going to start at uh, 25. I can't get the numbers in. So you get the whole shebang, okay? Plop these down here. You're going to get two of the cats, mm -hmm. Do. two cats, 2012. You're going to get the seven image variety, copyrighted 2018, my apologies. This one's fabulous. Heidi, I gotcha. Melinda, I see you also at 25. Okay. And then the fourth pack that you're going to get is the cat band the cat band is also from 2012. so how many is that 
four, five, six, 13. You are going to get 13 die cuts. They all do still say bistol. Where am I at? Oh, no, we don't. Here it is. Oh, my gosh, Michael. Ah! Right there they are. 2012 on the cat band. I wonder... Yep, okay. So this witch was originally copyrighted 1957, but then this one is 2018. So again, the seven pieces, they have a variety of uh, individual, I wonder what one's in 1929. I can't really tell because they're all front facing on me all. But that's the 2008, look at him. And again, the two cats, I don't know where the bistol. I'm going to have to assume it's on one of his feet that I can't see. But you're going to get ooh, two of the cats, OK? 2012. Whole shebang, it all comes to you. Thank you, guys, for the birds. Heidi, I got you. Miss Barbara, get it. Heidi coming in, Miss Barbara, Miss Heidi, Miss Melinda's getting in on it. Everything will be yours. It's a whole, it's a whole Halloween party. The beauty of these is that it's just poster tack. Have fun with these. You can craft with them, make garland out of it, but it is a whole Halloween party, y'all. But you get them all. All right, thanks for the bids. We got Miss Heidi coming in at 34. Appreciate you. Let's go ahead and do the countdown, but you get everything. So 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, two, one, and a bid end. You get it all, you get it all, you get it all, you get it all. Lots, lots and lots and lots. All right, there's our spooky cat Halloween bid end. Thank you, Miss Ruthie B. Appreciate you, lady. Just in cases, coming in. Let's catch up. All right, Miss Heidi, you were holding it down. Thank you. Miss Barbara, I gotcha. So Marilyn, okay, but then Melinda. All right, so Miss Barbara had the just in case of 45, but Miss Melinda came in with her just in case of 50. So at 46, congratulations and thank you, Melinda. The whole shebang is coming to you. Thank you. All righty. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Okay. So, <clears throat> you know, the interesting thing about art is, is that it's very subjective. We can both be looking at the same thing. One of us can be very inspired of it, by it. The other one of us can look at it and be like, I just don't like it at all. So, you know, that's what we got next. Now, I'm really digging this piece. I really, truly do. Okay. Um, I do. So, okay, let's do this. So, we've got this. Okay. We've got the Dean of Schools signature. Who is this? Oh, the President's President and Board of Trustee. But we see here that Richard N. Cunningham was awarded the diploma of the School of Dayton Art Institute on April 26, 1968 in Dayton, Ohio. It is embossed. I don't know. There you go. Yeah. Okay. But what you are going to get with that is an original artwork by Mr. Cunningham. So it's on this. It's the paper itself is very much like a vellum. 
I do believe that it was some kind of printmaking that this was achieved with almost like, oh, you know, you carve it and then you press it down and it's one color. And then but there's a different carving and you press it down woodblock. I, I know that there are other ways in which to create this, but I thought maybe if there was a mid-century lover, ciao, Jean, ciao. Oh, it could be like batik. I mean, it's the paper itself almost has a linen feel, right? Um, the image itself, please keep in mind, I did measure from the white to the white on this. It is 15 by 12 and a half, okay? But it is an original piece of artwork. Um, I'm going to start it at a very conservative $18. I don't know. I just, you know, again, uh, it's subjective. I thought there was a signature. I might be making it up. I'm making it up. I don't even know if I'm holding it the right way. I guess, you know, do you want it like this? Are you, would you do it like this? Ooh, ooh. I kind of, actually, I kind of like it like this. Is anybody with me on it here? I'm kind of preferring it this way. This, ooh, look at that, y'all. Okay, do you see the clouds? Do you see the mountain range? Is there a river running through here? Do you, I like this way too. That's pretty fabulous. I like it like that. Nettie, thank you so much. I got your bid of 18. Again, it's a one of a kind piece. I don't know. Now I'm vibing with it like this. I'm really vibing. I just thought, again, like if you're a mid-century lover, thinking about this with like your mid-century glasses, like your olives, your amberinas, you know, you've got your brass. Um, I just think that this would be a very welcome addition. Uh, again, a one of a kind piece. And it, his name was Richard N. Cunningham. He graduated in April of 1968 of the Dayton Art Institute. So this piece will also come with it. I'll need to fold it down, I think, to make it realistic. So that mount, I mean, it's hidden. That information is hidden behind it. I mean, for the sake of framing, truthfully, you wouldn't cut any pertinent information off and you could almost do it like this. So if you do have it mounted, you know, you could have that. Let me line it up here. You could have it like this. And then this could be on the back if you wanted. The embossing is right here for the Dayton Art Institute. Uh, name and signatures are right down here. So I just think it's pretty special. It's very unique and a way just to be a good steward of an artisan. All right, we got Nettie is coming in at 18. I only see Nettie, so you know what we're going to do. We're going to keep it down to a 10 second countdown. Appreciate you. And let's do it. So here we go. Uh, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and a bid end. Ooh, Miss Joan, get it. I think it's a beautiful piece. I don't know, y'all. I'm really liking it like that. Ooh, Nettie got her. Oh, but Miss Joan got her just in case in too. Oh, there is our painting bid end. Thank you, Miss Ruthie B. Thank you so much, Nettie, for your bids. You're just in case. Miss Joan. At 26, lady, congratulations. It is coming to you. 
Miss Joan, let me try something. Let's all just go ahead and experiment right here. I might. Miss Joan, you let me know if this is acceptable to you or not. This would definitely help with shipping. I'm feeling comfortable with this. You let me know. I can actually have it rolled. Obviously, I'm going to. I will seal this in a vinyl bag. Are you okay with it coming rolled? I'm not going to tape it, but are you okay with it coming rolled? That might not be a bad idea. You let me know. You let me know. Um, I will say this. It doesn't affect this in any way. All right. We're becoming round the mountain. When she comes, when she comes. Okay, let's do, we're going to do some books. <clears throat> some books, yes, we do. Now, this one, Heidi, you ship all of yours rolled. Yeah, I mean, it's not wise to keep it in there for years and years and years, but it technically is okay if you're going to mount it, because even after years, it'll flatten it out. So, all right, where are we at? We've got a book, technically a journal or an autograph book, if you will. Now, this one's a little bit um, non-traditional in comparison to the ones that I found in the past, just because of the actual shape of it. I'm going to start it off at, I don't have any more. No, Suzette, I sure do not. Sorry. Um, all, we, we got through all of our artwork at this point. So, um, check out the back on this fully embossed you know you are seeing some sign you got it joan um you are seeing some signs of age here but look at that embossing the gilding is in really good condition and then when we flip it over see the spine it's plain look at that album of friendship look at how gorgeous that is that black and gold. Now there is some condition issue down here. See it right here. Okay. The pages themselves are gilded. So they have that gold shine to them. Isn't that beautiful? It's an autographed album, but or autograph book. But not only is it an autograph book, which again, the shape is really odd because you typically find them rectangular. Thank you, Anne. I gotcha. Not only that, there are a number of steel cut illustrations in here. And y'all, they are old ones. Look at this. Look at the depth in that. Now, I will tell you, there are one or two um, signature, signatures, beg pardon, that are very brief. But most of it in here, uh, they're quite wordy. I will say that, okay? Quite wordy. Um, as evidenced by, look at this. Like, it's to Miss Amelia. Miss Amelia's friend, look at this. Miss Amelia's friends were legit. I mean, they filled it out. So we do have blank pages. Um, this is the one you've got cream and there's like a light lavender. Those are blank. I believe I have some blue ones in here too, if I'm not mistaken. I might be, no, there are some blue ones. Just find some more. They're kind of randomly put in the book throughout. Um, 1855. 1855. So again, 1855. They really filled these out. It's just like a little blurb, some cute little funny saying. But Miss Amelia, this one is March 31st, 1856. So quite literally, turn of the 18th century. Gotcha, Dusty. I mean, look at, you don't, you just, and I guess maybe because the pages are bigger, but still, and again, it is to Miss Amelia. Amelia is consistently 
the recipient. Look at that handwriting, absolutely beautiful. Now this one's dated 1860. So Miss Amelia kept this one for a good while. Here we've got, look at this. What does it say? The first storm. Oh, this is an engraving. Do you see the depth in that? She said, girl, your robe flew open. Okay, so this is, this one's 1859. This is just a short one. Blue pages, blue pages. Here's another, uh, in, pardon me, engraving. Just, that's unusual. This one's 1856. We have lived, loved a uh, something while, and now again, something passed. Say will not memory oft beguile of one who oft will think of thee. Will thou, dear friend, remember me? This is from Belleville, New Jersey. Lorena Howell from Belleville, New Jersey. Oh, there's green paper too. See that this is weird because this looks like it says. 36 but that would be so off from the other dates maybe it's just a 56 and the way they made some people's fives look like three dear amelia forget not here forget not her who writing here still prays that bliss may be your lot and oh when Others hold you, dear. Forget, dear one, forget me not. Mary W. David, Madison, Connecticut. Interesting. So some of these are very legible. Some of them I'm like, eh, can't read it. Our memory after something, something, 1856. All righty. So thank you, Susie. Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Dusty. Appreciate all of your bids. So 1850 to 1860, let's go ahead and start our countdown for our album, album of friendship with engravings, not illustrations, engravings. So here we go, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, eight seven six five four three two one and a bid end i just find these to be so fascinating thank you linda dusty coming in hard i know it's a good one I love these. All right, there is our lady book bid and thank you, Miss Ruthie B. So Anne, you almost Linda, but Dusty Power Move Girl at thirty nine. Dusty, congratulations and thank you. It is coming to you. All right, ooh, Dusty, you're getting some good ones, sister. Those two look good together. Okay. So we've got two of these kind of running in order or back to back, I guess I should say this one. Okay, I didn't write this date down. Okay, so one of my favorite kind types of books to collect are the um, the society kind of books. Um, this one. <laughs> I was, okay, but anyhow. Um, we're going to start this one off at $20. It's in really good antique condition. It is copyrighted 1882, 1882 copyright. 
on this one. Bit plain on the back. You, know, you can see some marring, signs of age, okay? Here we've got the red on this one, which I think is great with the burgundy cover. Here is our spine, fabulous spine on that one. You can see the black and the gilding on that one, still very legible. I'm not getting too close because I want to hide the title from you, okay? Then when we flip it over to the front, gorgeous. Look at that. A very Art Nouveau in style. The book is called Our Deportment, the way in which deportment, the way in which we conduct ourselves specifically in society, right? So again, it's just one of those societal books. Um, Y'all, there's a little bit of splitting in here. You can see it here, but honestly, it is not bad at all, okay? Uh, again, it's copyrighted 1882. And bloop, we do have a little black and white illustration in there. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Our deportment or the manners, conduct, and dress of the most refined society. This is one of those bougie, bougie ones, though, which is why I loved it. All right. Um, let me give you some chapters. We've got manners good manners as an element of worldly success, introductions, acquaintances thus formed. Uh, we've got salutations. The salutation originally an act of worship. We have got edit etiquette on calls, etiquette on visiting, etiquette of cards, calling cards, visiting and calling cards, their size and style, wedding cards, leaving cards, um, we've got conversation, character revealed by conversation, importance of conversing well. Shouldn't children should be trained to talk well? <laughs> we just threw that one out the door. Um, cultivation of the memory, importance of remembering names, dinner parties, table etiquette, reception parties and balls, street etiquette, do not lack politeness how a lady and gentleman should walk together, when to offer the lady the arm, going up and down streets, smoking in the streets, carrying packages, meeting a lady acquaintance, corner loafers, um, traveling etiquette, etiquette of public places, riding and driving, courtship, or let's get into it. We've got wedding, home life, home training, home culture, Women's Higher Education in 1882, the letter writer, general rules of go that govern conduct, anniversaries, births, etiquette of foreign courts, business, dress, the toilet, toilet recipes, to remove, <coughs> pardon me, to remove <coughs> To remove, oh, I'm dried out, y'all. To remove, <coughs> to remove freckles, pimples, and sunburn, to beautify the complexion, to prevent the hair falling out, pomades and hair oils, sea foam or dry shampoo, to prevent the hair turning gray, to soften the skin, to cleanse the teeth, remedy for chapped hands, for corns, and chill blains. I don't know. I've never seen that word before. Where am I at? Right here. So the book is just in great condition. There are some illustrations. I mean, just enough to call it illustration, illustrated, but not a ton. You know, look at that. Etiquette, public places, we're riding on horses together. I mean, this is a really good one. Look at, there's your greeting cards. Look 
county fairs, self-respect. Uh, it is the mother's duty to see that her children protect themselves from the many pitfalls which surround them, such as malice, envy, conceit, avariciousness. when do you hear that word anymore, and other evils by being clad in the armor of self-respect. And then they will be able to encounter temptation and corruption, unstained and unpolluted. This feeling of self-respect is something stronger than self-reliance, higher than pride. It is an energy of the soul which masters the whole being for its good, watching with a never ceasing vigilance. It is the sense of duty and the sense of honor combined. It is an armor which, through powerless to shield from sorrows that putrefy and invigorate, yet will avert all hostile influences that assail from whatever source they come. The mother, the mother having once made her children conscious that always and everywhere they carry with them such an angel to shield, warn and rescue them, may let them go out into the world and fear nothing from the wiles and temptations which may beset them. So there it is. All right, y'all. <laughs> Let's do it. I agree. It does need to be retaught. We got Anne's holding it down at 36. Ladies, thank you for the bids. Again, it's lightly illustrated, but you know, just enough that they could call it illustrated. Pages are in great condition. Oh, I, it looks like there was something that was pressed in there at one time. Um, so bleach mine into submission. All right, let's go ahead and do the countdown. So here we go. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and bid end. To avoid, that's funny. <coughs> to avoid <coughs> chillblains on the feet, it is necessary to observe three rules. Avoid getting the feet wet. If they become so, change the shoes and stockings at once. Wear lamb's wool socks or stockings. Never, under any circumstances, Toast your toes before this, the fire, especially if you are very cold. Frequent bathing of the feet is a strong solution of alum. Bathing, frequent bathing of the feet in a strong solution of alum is useful in preventing the coming of chillblains. What the hell is a chillblain? There is our bid and thank you, Miss Ruthie. I got caught up in the chill blains. I don't even know if I'm saying the word right. And you were holding it at 36. She had her just in case of 40, but with that just in case of 86 at 41, dusty frostbite. Oh. 41, it's coming to dusty. Get it, lady. Okay. Now we're going to do this one. Let me just double check something y'all for y'all. Okay. <laughs> this one's fun. What are we doing? All right. I'm going to start this one off at 20. We're going to start our next book off at 20. Now, this is a golden, kind of like a mustardy book, plain. Do have like a bit of a water stain right here. Okay. It's an unusual color. <clears throat> it's called Hot Shot. Okay. There you see, you know, Fallows is our author, Hot Shot. Hot Shot. Fired at fashion's follies in society's abominations. Illustrated. Now, <clears throat> I should not do this, but you see there is shaking. 
In other words, this is what we say when we talk about the shaking. There's separation of the actual spine from the cover. All right. You see here, it is still intact. The pages are still stitched and then glued into this. All right. So the spine is separating from the cover, but still fully intact. It is a big book. Like this one, I always forget to give you guys the page count. My apologies. 569 pages. 569 pages. And this one is copyrighted in 1890. Check out this print. <clears throat> Dusty, I got you. Bobby, I see you. Thank you, ladies, for your bids. Look at this. All right. And again, we are copyright. Did I give you? Did I? This is copyrighted 18. Oh, thank you, Ruthie. I just, I had the next copyright written down. I was like, did I just tell you the wrong one? Yeah, this is a larger one, like in comparison. Like I said, I collect these, so. Um, like with our our department department, you know, comparatively, that's what you're. And these two go great together. Look at that color, gorgeous. All right, let's talk about subjects. Go to our table of contents. Uh, we've got dishonesty, the age of swindles, the danger of cities. Human birds of prey. I know a few of those. Foolish and wicked proverbs about women. Lying as a college study. <laughs> Personals and matrimonials. Young lady idiots. Skeleton girls. It says skeleton girls. The fat and lean. Dr. Lewis's sensible treatment. The first conditions of plumpness, what to eat and drink, ruined young men, the typical young man, parents' responsibility, the free allowance of spending money, <coughs> and employer's responsibility. Sacred and secular methods, tailor-made women, wise and foolish virgins, gilded sin, corrupt literature, the Mormon question, swearing and cursing, the haunt of inequity in New York, is a woman wanting in courtesy? The point of complaint, is it a matter of courtesy or of right? Courtesy may be abused. Women's profession dishonored, skill and science needed, the wealthy classes. Women's work made vulgar and disagreeable. Social purity, lost woman, test treatment of criminals, perils of young womanhood, some crying evils, divorce and its results, the folly of women suffrage, lust, social shams, babes in the social swim, hints of America, the quietest, I mean, tobacco's evil, girls who use slang. It goes on and on and on and on and on and on. And on. So again, pages overall, and again, it, it says that it's illustrated. It does have illustrations, but it's not like profuse, profusely illustrated, but there are enough in there. Okay. Oh, you saw it. Did you see it? I saw, ooh, look, what's this illustration? The wise and foolish virgins. Folly of it all. Where was that paper? Oh, I think it's a recipe. It's a recipe, y'all. There's a recipe in there. Two cups of sugar, a half cup of butter, one cup of sweet milk. Is that two or 12? Two. Two tables, tablespoons of baking powder, 
Whites of four eggs, no yellow used. You can try it out. It's an old recipe. Oh, look at this one. It's cute. All right, I have no idea where we're at. We're at Anne's Attic at 29. Thank you all for the bids. Do appreciate you. There's that recipe again. <clears throat> and is holding it down at 29. Let's go ahead and start the countdown. So here we go. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, and a boot end. What is this? The Moorish Dance, Paris, 1889. It's the Dance of Veils. All right. There is our honeypot bid end. Thank you, Miss Ruthie B. So we did, I'm just going to jump to it, Miss Anne. Had her bid of 29, but Dusty with that just in case of 86 at 30. Dusty, congratulations and thank you again. She's really building on to that library. Dusty, it is coming to you. Thank you, lady. All right. <clears throat> I'll come. We're down to our last four items. All right. This one. Is copyrighted 1873. 1873. All right. Boop, boop. Let me make sure. Starting this one at 30. Okay, there's your back. Kind of like a cinnamon color with your black border going around there. A little bit of a, a, a Greek revival here with the, the perimeter of it, okay? Sewing, sewing, showing some signs of age. Look at that spine. Ooh, gold gilding, black detailing, kind of keeping it hidden from you so you can see the grand reveal on the front, okay? Mm. It is the world of wonders. Do you see that gold gilding? Is that not gorgeous or what? Now, this did pick up some moisture. You can see right here, there's a little bit of waffling to it. However, the pages remained in really good condition. <clears throat> so I'm not ensure, entirely sure what's up with this. I think that there might have been moisture in the air. The cover absorbed it, but it doesn't seem like there was water that was spilled onto the actual pages. Okay, again, copyrighted 1873. You have gilding on the side. <clears throat> there is the beginning of shaking, um, but it's it's minimal at this point. So with this particular book, in order to prevent it from continuing to separate, rather than storing the book like this, I would really recommend storing the book like this. Okay. That way, there's not like the gravity is not pulling, the weight of the pages is not pulling uh, from the spine. So it's starting, but it is not significant at this point. So I say that just as a means to kind of store it. All right, 1873. Now, a child, I believe it was a child, Got in here on the first page. Kind of made themselves at home a little bit. Um, from what I could see, they only got crayon on this particular image. All of the other images have been left untouched. Okay. So, what this is, <clears throat> I mean, <laughs> name it from uh, air, hammer and steam hammer to ants. 
um, to beetles, to spider silk, to spider training, to ships, to sundials, astronomical wonders, stars, atmosphere, air currents, um, ice, leeches, uh, water spouts, waterfalls. It is just that. It is the wonder of the worlds. All righty. It is fully illustrated. There's science, there's math, there's zoology in there. I don't even know what that is. The Great Lantern Fly. Um, she had to fight a duel with a rival. Oh, well, the ladies are over here slinging it out. Watch out. The Bravery of Women is what that's entitled. Um, so just, I mean, it's a science book. It's a history book. It's a math book. We've got the pyramids in there. It encompasses so very much. Um, liberally, look at this. liberally illustrated throughout. Is that Nostradamus? It kind of looks it. All kinds of drawings and sketches. Giants. What is that? Sea nettles. I've never known a jellyfish to look like that. Maybe they're extinct at this point. I don't know. We got the Leaning Tower of Pisa. And I got you at 33. Thank you, lady. I have to say, I don't know if it's psychosemantic, but there's a little bit of a syrup smell to this book. <laughs> Just saying. I don't know what that's about. <clears throat> but there is a little bit of a syrup smell added bonus right all right susie i got you up to 34 dusty up to 35 ah coral all right y'all i'm gonna go ahead and start the countdown fabulous book let's go ahead and do it so here we go 20 19 18 17 16 15, 14, 13, ah, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and a bid end. Wings through in a power bid. Thank you. Ew. The ginormous or the electric eel. Blah, 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 blah. Oop, and oop, Dusty fighting it out. There's our total eclipse. Bit end. Thank you, Miss Ruthie B. So we had wings at 55. Anne's threw it up at 56. But at 57, Dusty, congratulations and thank you. I know that it's going to go to a good home. This one is coming for my personal collection. Um, it, it really is a fascinating book. So I hope you do enjoy it. And uh, thank you so much, lady. Congratulations. She's got herself another one. All righty. Different kind of books. I'm going to sell all three of these books together. One money, y'all. <clears throat> these are reference books. Okay. These are... <clears throat> My goodness, I'm really losing my voice. These are reference books. We're going to mail all three together. Oh, my gosh. I bet they do because you're putting some weight on. Um, you're going to get all three of them. And if I'm not mistaken, this one is very sought after in the Fenton Glass Collectors. Now, I'm going to let you know that on this particular one and then also on this one, this stupid price sticker, okay? So it's all three Fenton books. I'm gonna sell all three of the Fenton books, reference books for one monies, okay? And I'm going to search it at 20. 
Okay. First one, we've got Fenton Art Glass from 1939 to 1980. We have 1907 to 1939. See how I did y'all? Okay. Now this, so these two are covering, wow. Night, this is going to cover us from 1907 to 1939. 1939 to 1980. Okay. See how I did you? This one is going to be our overlap. Or is it this one? One of these is like really collectible. Okay. <clears throat> They're full color with black and white illustrations. You get all of the patterns. Yeah. I mean, there's lamps. You've got, look at the colors in here. Look at this. I mean, some of this stuff I have never seen. There goes your milk glass. I just, some of it is absolutely fascinating. Look at that. I have never, did you all know? Look, there's black crust. Look at that. That is sick. There's just some silver crest. We've got peach crest, all the peach crest, roast crest. Oh, look at all the violets in the snow. So this one is full color. Except for where they did milk glass, I guess they figured it was white, so why bother? I'm trying to find some fascinating. They even have the Jackie O stuff in here. Look at this. Look at those colors. Okay, so this one is the 1939 to 1980. This one is the bougie one, 1907 to 1939. So you're talking the antique stuff, right? The early Fenton. Um, I mean, it's got the stuff that looks very much like Mosser. They've got the chocolate glass, the Burmese. Look at this stuff. Look at that. They're just, it's fascinating stuff to really look through. You're going to get like all the, like, obviously there's going to be like a lot of carnival glass and this, I'm sorry. I'm just like so busy staring. Look at this one. Look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? What are you serious? So the patterns, the colors, the shapes, the, oh, the whole nine yards, y'all. Very deco, celestial blue here. What's this one called? Florentine green, Florentine green. All right, let me catch up to you. So you're gonna get all three. Bobby, I gotcha is holding it at 32. All three books are coming at you, one money is, I will let you know this is gonna be, the, the three of these, it's probably like, that's a good six pounds of books. <laughs> but they will ship media. So you're going to get all three. Bobby's holding it at 32. Thank you very much. Let's go ahead and start the countdown. So here we go. Uh, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and a Fenton bit end. Don't worry, we only have two more items for those of you that are still here with me. This has been a long sale for me, but I was serious. I said, I gotta get rid of stuff, so I'm getting rid of stuff. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me for so long. <laughs> there is our popcorn bit end. Thank you so much, Ruthie. Joan, I appreciate you, girl. It come in after the bit end. 
So that means, let me set these down safely. Oh, Kim, I see you're just in case at 36. Miss Melissa, I got you at 40, but Miss Baba Erp threw it down. So at 41, Bobby, congratulations and thank you. They are coming to you. That is hours and hours upon reading, entertainment, and knowledge. Thank you. Okay. Last two items. We're done with the... I don't have any more books. I don't have any more ephemera. I do not. I do not. <laughs> now, this is coming from my personal collection. I didn't really realize it, but Richard does feel, and I can, I, I can totally see that now, Richard feels that this is a marriage. I didn't, I bought it like this, so I don't know. Let me just check something here. Okay. I've got some silver plate here for you. This one's pretty gosh darn special. I'm going to start it at $18.00. It is Hall, Elton, and Company Silver Plate. Hall, Elton, and Company Silver Plate. Let me take the lid off. So there is our hallmark up here. It is triple plate. Okay. Are you ready for this? Look at that. So this is on two sides right here. Okay. So you're going to get that on two sides. Look at the handles. Look, underneath there's even faces. Kind of got like that Man of the North vibe on it. But otherwise, it's very plain, right? It's all about, and again, another, and you get the two more faces. So four, what is that? Six faces on that. Now you could display it as such, all right? It does have the lid, which Richard was like, it doesn't fit in there perfectly. And I... I guess it doesn't fit in there perfectly, but I mean, I think it's a really good look, right? As it stands from base to the top of the finial, you are at eight inches. So let's take a closer look. Unfortunately, the lid is not hallmarked, but you've got a beautiful floral detailing running around the perimeter and then the finial itself, not sure what to call that. Pardon me, but I think that's great. I love that. So eight inches as I have it set up here. Okay. I think it works, to be honest with you. I think if it were, this finial might have been like a flame. It could have been another face. But I mean, I don't know. I think it really works. I really do. If it's a marriage, I think it's done very well. Because as you can see, like, I think that this, the floral pattern with the faces, the simplicity, because you have, you just have like this band of detail and then it's plain everywhere else. So I'm really digging it, right? All right, eight inches. We've got Melissa and Glowy. Lynn, thank you all so much for your bids. All right, Glowy's holding it down at 25. Um, and let's go ahead. She's over her limit. Uh, but let's go ahead and do the countdown for you. All right, here we go. So 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and a bid end. Oh, you know what? You guys probably, like, in Pennsylvania, this is a piece that is sometimes behind me. You guys might have seen this in uh, previous lives. <laughs> I just totally forgot that. That's this piece. All right, Melissa, got your... Oh, there's our faces. Bit end. Thank you, Miss Ruthie B. All right. Melissa had her just in case of 37, but Miss Glowy kept it safe. So with her just in case of 47 at 38, Glowy, congratulations and thank you. It is coming to you. Um, Chloe, what else? Ephemera lot. So 
So Glowy's bringing up something that I do want to touch on really quickly. I know some of you have bought in like larger pieces of FEMRAP, maybe with like some hard goods, something like that. Um, I'm going to do my best, number one, to get you the best possible shipping. Um, so things might come in one box, things might get shipped separately. It all really depends on the dimensions and the overall weight. So do keep that in mind. Um, like I say, I always try to get you guys the very best possible deal in shipping. So just know uh, today's sale, we're going to we're going to try to keep up on that, too. OK. Dusty, neither does mine. Neither does mine. All right. This is definitely an unusual piece for me. I've never done one like this. We'll see. Um, I'm going to start it just at $18. It is actually um, a dinner plate. I can't believe that one would ever eat off of something like this, but you know, hey. Um, it is the Henrik and Company. Henrik and Company. It's Bavaria. It is a fine, fine porcelain. Okay. Henrik and Company. We pull it out. We have a 10 and a half inch diameter on this. 10 and a half inch diameter. There are no chips. There are no cracks. Let me reveal it to you the appropriate way. Are you all ready for this plate? Uh, look at that. There is no issue with the gilding on this. Do you see the pattern? Is that not stunning or what? OK. Now, in the middle, we have a pastoral scene. You know, it's a shepherd with his dog and his sheep. This is hand painted. So the image that you're seeing is hand painted. It is not transfer wear. I don't know. You can kind of see on the dog. You can see in his coat. Um, it's more so in like the blacks. This is hand painted. It is not a transfer wear. We pull it back. Oh, there's a goat. I didn't even notice that before. There's a little goat right there. Look at that. Is that not stunning or what? Obviously, a plate stand, um, a wall plate. I mean, that is gorgeous. This makes an excellent backdrop. I don't know if you saw, but like, I'm okay with the mixing of the metals. I really like it, but to each their own, right? All right, we got Miss Lindy coming in. At 18. Thank you, lady, so much. Do appreciate you. Oh, Dusty, is it your birthday? Well, happy birthday to you, woman. Hi. Then you did yourself good. You got some great birthday presents to yourself today. Thank you. No chips, no cracks. It is from Bavaria. Henrik and Company. Okay. Gorgeous porcelain. Stunning gilding on that hand-painted pastoral scene. It's definitely bouge bouge. Oh, Miss Jones getting in on it too. Thank you, ladies. And I'm going to go ahead and do our last countdown of the sale. Whew! Let's do it. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and a bit end. This was a long sale today, you guys. We're almost at three hours. Oop, Joan, I got your just in case, lady. There is our puppy dog. She they went for the sheep dog. Our sheep dog bid and thank you, Miss Ruthie B. Thank you, Lynn. I appreciate your bids, but with that, just in case of 30 at 23, it is going to Miss Joan G. Congratulations and thank you again, Joan. Okay. Oh, we did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. We made it through this three hour long sale. It is definitely much longer than. Any other sale, uh, I, I really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me for this long. A huge, huge, huge shout out to Miss Ruthie B. Bam. 
uh, for being here this entire time. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. Um, lady, you killed it as always. I want to give a huge round of applause also um, and appreciation to Miss Kim and to Miss Karen for being here and putting in reminders and for helping me out here on the sale. Ladies, it is greatly appreciated. I want to thank everybody that has been able to stay with me throughout the duration of the sale. That is most certainly appreciated. And if you are watching the replay and you've made it this far, well, congratulations. I most certainly appreciate you. Uh, again, you guys, there is never any one way that is ever too small to support the channel. Each and every single way is definitely appreciated. I most certainly appreciate uh, the purchases at the end of the day is a business and it is my full-time job. So I certainly appreciate that. Um, but to be able to be a work, a lunch buddy, to to be there as background noise during your chores, it is a great honor and a tremendous privilege. And I am very appreciative for that. And I do thank you. Um, so you guys don't forget, my goodness, there is a vamp sale that is happening in approximately one hour one hour uh don't forget to go check it out virtual antique marketplace.com you won't regret it it is running for four hours i believe um check it out it's going to be well worth it there are some great sellers over there uh yes let's all have some pancakes in celebration of dusty's birthday happy birthday to you again dusty thank you for spending your day here with us. We certainly appreciate it. Um, Vamp live sale tonight. Go check it out. Uh, we appreciate you, Bessie. We really, truly do. Don't forget that Misty and I are going to be back next Tuesday at 1 p.m. on Thrifter Junker Vintage Hunter for our weekly Tuesday sale. And yes, I will be back here next Wednesday at 1 p.m. on the Cult of Vintage for another weekly solo sale. I hope that you all have a great weekend. Be safe, have fun, and uh, hopefully we'll get to see you all next week. Bye, guys.